mapalamig ng kaunti para ma-handle natin siya. Kailangan natin siyang ishred. So okay na yung ating meat. Na-shred na natin siya. And then, another component ng birria when you're serving it like the traditional way is always have consomme on the side. So yung pinagpakuluan natin, basically yung pinaka-stock is itatabi lang natin. And yun din yung gagamitin natin pang, pang tosta doon sa ating corn tortilla. We will be dipping yung ating corn tortilla doon sa ating consomme para maging pliable na siya. And then, we stuff it with our meat. Kung natatakam na kayo mga food explorers, kaya naman ready na tayong ipatikim kay Maki ang mga putahing inihandahan natin. Ang kinulog na bibe at ang goat birya. Please, mga ginoo, mga binibini, mga ginang, inyo pong tikman at ating pagsaluhan yung inyong mga alaga dito. <laughs> For us as a chef and come from Thailand, we want to be able to showcase our food. All right. And we want to influence people to know uh, it's not just only the food that is supposed to be tasty, it also should be that it's good for your body. Okay. Right? So how to make other nationality to eat our food, we have to adapt to wherever we go. So the bencha rong, bencha is meaning five. Rong is we used to call a China ware. And this is a unique China ware was created, invented in Thailand. And when we talk about this kind of unique uh, ware, of course food is come with it. So bencha rong is a name that's been selected by Dusit. And bencha rong now become a unique restaurant for all the Dusit brands. Personally, I know Dusit since I was young. And it's an honor to be in Dusit and also to lead the bencha rong kitchen. Sa linggo-linggo nating paglalakbay para makahanap ng bagong lugar kung saan may masarap na pwedeng food trip destination, sa Davao tayo dinala ng ating mga paa at dito may isang food establishment na nag offer ng legit Thai food experience gamit ang mga local ingredients. Lasang-lasa mo ang Thai flavors dahil ang kanilang chef ay isang Thai national. At ang kanyang masasarap na putahe ay matitigman sa Benjarong Bar and Restaurant sa Dusit Tani, Davao. When the young kids in Thailand, you you know, you start with the drinking and you make this uh, honey yeah. pollution, you have pollution. Right. And I said, I make better. So I try out to, to learn it professionally. So All I right. put myself as a trainee, uh, start as a steward and become a cook. For us as a chef and come from Thailand, we want to be able to showcase our food. All right. And we want to influence people to know uh, it's not just only the food that is supposed to be tasty. It also should be that it's good for your body. Okay. Right? So, how to make other nationality to eat our food, we have to adapt to wherever we go. And of course, if you talk about Benjerong in Davao and Benjerong in Manila, it's completely big different. different. Yeah. Benjerong in Manila, Chef Cha, she's doing a great job. And uh, don't forget, there's already like 18 years of experience in the right. Philippines. And we are just uh, a baby or elementary. So a big yeah. gap, and of course we need to understand what is the local looking for. So basically, the vision here is to to provide a Thai experience yes. through your food. Yes. But not necessarily pushing with the authenticity part, especially when the purists would come after us saying yeah. that for you to say uh, a cuisine is authentic, you have to source the ingredients yeah. where the cuisine is from. Yeah. So that's basically where you tweak the idea. So Benjerong is a Thai experience with Filipino ingredients. The tamarind sauce is yeah. 
It's a bomb, man. Yeah. Fantastic. See, another that is very common here in the Philippines, but we don't utilize it like this. Yeah. The mango dip is awesome. In different places, it's different requirement for the customer. And here, my majority of customers are more family-oriented, so the table is quite big, and the food it should be good for sharing, and the, the taste should be uh, somehow uh, authentic. With the flavors of Filipinos bringing in Thai cuisine, were there any challenges that you faced? The challenge would be the spicy level. They cannot take the spicy level the same that we, we used to do. But that's not the big deal. The big deal is that sometimes the herbs that we put on the plate, except like coriander, yeah. or not everyone is bringing... or lemongrass that we eat raw, yeah. they will like cook, or vegetable that we eat raw, they like it to be cooked. Okay. So uh, I have to try to, to think and stimulate which dish they would respond well. Like papaya salad. Papaya right salad is... Yeah. Everything is raw. There's a three different regions. Here would be a northeast of Thailand, okay. the papaya salad. Mm -hmm. So this is will go along with papaya with salad. Papaya salad. Yeah. All right. And you will have the sauce here. These are common. It's made from tamarind and roasted rice and okay. herbs. And this one, I'm using the local mango, the ripe mango, to make oh. a sweet and sour sauce. The tamarind sauce is yeah. a bomb, man. Yeah. Another thing that. That is very common here in the Philippines, but we don't utilize it like this. Yeah. For for tamarind, especially the ripe ones, we either just make it sweet so that we can snack on them. Yeah. We don't use it as condiment. I guess that's, that's one of the examples that I'm stressing out so that we can learn how to expound on the available all of the usage that we do, mm -hmm. on the available ingredients that we have. And even like the mango dip that you have here. We don't do that as often. I'm just stressing out on points that we as a Filipino, especially myself, as a culinary artist, that we can adapt. Because the philosophy of, of your of your flavors, of your cuisine, is something that we can definitely also copy, in a way, so as to elevate or to transform the Filipino dining experience. Habang napapasarap ang kwentuhan namin ni Chef Pia, ay hindi ko maaaring palampasin matikman ang mga nagsasara pang mga putahing inuluto niya para sa mga bumibisita dito sa Benjerong Bar and Restaurant. Similar to laksa, most people here know laksa. But Khao Soi Kai also is a very long history and mostly in the north of Thailand. So it's uh, Khao Soi means rice being cut. So we used to call the this noodle as a cut rice. And it's come with uh, similar to a curry with the crispy noodles, with the chickens, and of course, there's a condiment of lime and chilies combined with it. The correct translation is shrimp, kung, pat is stir fry, frick is chili, clear is salt, so very straightforward. Uh, so shrimp stir fry with chili and salt, and of course, with a little bit of seasoning, and you cannot go wrong with spring onion, coriander, so that's how basic ingredients of Thailand and fried garlic, of course. Different presentation, different key of ingredients, because me also I'm responsible and actually I love everywhere I go. I like to support a local farmer. So there's a lot of good farmer who produce a heirloom vegetable, uh, produce cheeses, and it would be weird for people to know the Thai food to collaborate with the cheeses, but that is gonna happen soon. Para kung mag ano experiment sa <laughs> pero. Nakakaano siya ha, parang nakakaingganyo siya pag nakita mo to. Ayun ba yun? So mong curious kang tikman. Wow! Wow! 